In the last episode, we left the RV park in southern Arizona and headed north on our two-month boondocking adventure. We found our first free camping spot just south of the Flagstaff area, and we couldn't have been more pleased. This area was called Willard Springs Road, and it was easy to get to off the freeway, yet very secluded, nestled amongst the pines. And after the weekend crowd left, we had an extremely peaceful time. Let's check in and see how well we did. Well guys, this concludes our five days of our first boondocking trip at uh, Willard Springs Road in between Sedona and Flagstaff, Arizona. And we're just gonna give a little boondocking report. How'd we do, Chris? We did awesome. We made it five days. Five days, yeah. Which is really good. Our power situation was amazing. Um, and we, on this specific trip, we were bottlenecked by our black tank. So that's pretty much full. Um, but we did really good making it a full five days. And we're, we're happy with that. We, we could push it out to six, seven, which we might try to do on our next one. As far as the black tank goes, um, our water, fresh water, we're still at like a third in our tank because these bladders helped a ton. These are awesome. We love them. Um, they're easy to use. They're like, they're not awkward or fumbly, which our other big one was. So we're definitely gonna try to fill this up today. We have to hit the dump station, gonna fill up some water. We're gonna get to a trash dumpster. We have about four bags total. Some of them are recycling. I'd say half of it's recycling because we drink a lot of bubbly water. Um, so we have to do that. I did condense down the refrigerator to try to get as much compacted as possible before we go to the grocery store. So, you know, washing any last minute dishes is something that we do before we dump and fill. So everything's as clean as possible. Also, Aaron and I did shower twice too. That's worth mentioning. So overall, like we did great in the five days. We didn't feel um, restricted or like we were camping at all or roughing it. Like it felt very comfortable. Yeah, this is the first time that we really, we're not stressing about, you know, and it all comes back to the energy source. It, it really does. Um, so a little more detail on that. We uh, came in Friday night and over the night we lost about 10% power just uh, through normal usage. And the next day, the solar here was great, by the way. It was just unbelievably sunny for the past four or five days. And so we were getting in uh, 1.7 kilowatt hours of solar every single day. So that really helped a ton. But the next day, our solar recharged our lithium batteries, the Battleborns, all the way back up to full, which we've never experienced that before. You got really excited about that. That was cool to see how that worked because one of the benefits is, is how quickly they charge. And we just didn't know how that was going to work out. Um, yeah. So... We then started using our laptops and uh, electrical sources a little bit more, like phones and hotspot. We had the hotspot plugged in like all the time, which we, we never did before. Yeah. Um, so we started losing about 10% power each day. And this morning after, uh, you know, breakfast and everything, well, not breakfast yet, but coffee, mm -hmm. we're at uh, just over 50%, 53%. So that's just unbelievable and it's just been it's been great the only high power usage we did was our uh, water kettle to make coffee so that's a thousand watt i did use the microwave once oh yeah you did use it once for like 90 seconds and that that felt frivolous yeah well it's just you know before we always had to make sure every single light was off after two days we were pretty much at 50 percent of our agm so every little uh power source we needed to make sure it was off. So the hotspot had to be off at all times. If we're not using it, the lights had to be off. Uh, we had to make sure we were charging at appropriate times. And now it's just, it's like normal. Yeah, the way it should be. Unbelievable. So anyways, we are going to uh, get moving here. We're on our way to Bryce National Park. Bryce Canyon. Bryce Canyon. It's the first national park opening um, on May 6th. Today is... May 6th actually so 
we'll probably, uh, so our goal today, you know, these errands, they always take way longer than what you expect. So we have to do the dump and fill, which might be two different spots. We have to go to the grocery store. We have to find a dumpster. We have to find, I have to go to FedEx. Um, I thought there was something else. Oh, gas station. Yeah. So whenever that is all done, we're going to hit the road and we're going to get as far as possible. So we might get into Utah tonight, but we might still be in Arizona. And then tomorrow morning we'll pick up and we'll get the rest of the way there. And we're just so stoked guys to be out on the road again. Like I can't tell you how different it is to just be like back doing what we should be doing. We packed up the van, said goodbye to Willard Springs Road, and continued heading north to Utah. But first, a stop in Flagstaff for supplies. So we're at Sam's Club now, stocking up on our food before we go boondocking. And this is something I always do at Sam's Club, is I take the food out of the original packaging just so I can physically fit it into my fridge and also maximize the space in our fridge. Um, these big giant things of chicken I got, this is seven pounds, this won't fit in there. So I transfer it to a Ziploc that I reuse these and I use like once a bag gets kind of to the end of its life, then I use it for the chicken and I condense it down, get all the air out. So this saves a ton of space in our fridge, but also what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for success while you're out boondocking because then you're not left with this trash and all of these trimmings of fat and bones that I took off the chicken. Imagine this sitting in your garbage in your van for like three days, it would reek. So I try to get rid of anything like this as early on as possible while we're still here being a patron to this store. I just spent a lot of money here. So I have no problem using their trash for products that I just purchased here. So we're gonna get this all in the fridge and we are set up to go boondocking and we're ready to go. gonna get to see the real Grand Canyon on this trip because it's closed but this is as close as we're gonna get this is it it's great what a great little drive through it's kind of sad though to see all the empty Navajo stands where people sell their jewelry and their crafts and stuff just think of all the money they're losing out on from tourists yeah there's definitely some families that are hurting around here I'm sure but as soon as we got out of Flagstaff, we could see this red rock all in the distance, and it is absolutely gorgeous. So we're pretty excited, but we're gonna miss the Grand Canyon for now and keep heading towards Utah. After making it up to the border, we decide to stop in Page, Arizona, and find another spot to stay for the night. A quick search on Campendium.com had us choose a four-star review of Glen Canyon Corral. The views here were absolutely amazing. It wasn't a very large spot, could only hold a few rigs, maybe a few vans. We had a wonderful sunset and it was a perfect spot for a quick overnight stay. Yes. <laughs> so we made it and we're going to just scope out uh, Bryce Canyon National Park right now. It's the day after it opened, it's May 7th. And I read that it was pretty quiet yesterday. It was pretty soft. Um, so we're hoping that it's not busy. And if it is crazy, we're probably not gonna, you know, do too much. But I think since we're right here, we're gonna check it out and see what happens. Yes. We're about two and a half hours away from the amphitheater. And our, you know, we kind of slept in a little today. We always leave a little later than what we'd hope, but our plan is usually get up, have coffee, and once we're like feeling good, then we take off, get somewhere to park. And once we park there, then we have breakfast and stuff. But we try to get in as early as possible so that we can find a parking spot and then settle in while we're there. So that's our plan.
family keeps <laughs> scaring me and walking up out of nowhere. <laughs> All right, we are at Sunset Point in Bryce Canyon National Park. And so this is the day after it opened up and... It's Friday. No, you're way off. It's Thursday. Today? Today's Thursday. Are you sure? Yes, it's Thursday. It opened on Wednesday. <laughs> and it, there's very few cars here. Um, I did not know what was going to happen when we got here. Was it going to be packed? Was it going to be dead? Um, there's very few people here. Maybe, I don't know, 30 cars. And I think this is like one, one of two places that's open in the whole park. So we're eating breakfast. We're going to try to go on the biggest hike they have, which is eight miles. It's, uh, they call it the Fairyland Loop Trail. And, Sounds magical. Uh, it does. So I don't know what to expect. I, I don't know. I really haven't looked at pictures. and. So we just picked this hike based off the distance? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it took us a while to drive. Um, I think we drove for like three and a half hours. Four hours. Yesterday or? This, Today. This morning? Yeah. That's no, two and a half hours. Roughly. Probably three hours plus. So yes. we're feeling kind of cooped up. Mm -hmm. We have some energy to get out. Yeah. So we're pretty excited about this. And um, we're going to go hit up the hike. This is Inspiration Point. Were you just doing a selfie pose? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> inspiration Point. Are you inspired? I am so in inspired. Um, this is like every other national park we go to. Like I have these really high expectations and then real life just blows it away. And I was just joking like every time we get to a new park, I say this is the coolest park we've ever been to because they're all so awesome. And look nobody's here this would usually have maybe like 200 people yeah we'd be like arm to arm yeah we were just saying like god remember how packed yellowstone was like you just imagine having a place all to yourself and this is like it i didn't realize how many pine trees were in the rock so that's i think the most surprising thing for me to see i'm sure if i look at photos now on google that's all i'll see is pine trees because i've seen it in real life it sticks out to me and also, so we've just been kind of walking around the rim and it's really cool because the view is the same but every angle is so different and every time you change your angle position you see like different striation patterns and it's really awesome. Yeah, it's the same big kind of canyon but yeah, it's completely different. And then this view is just vast. Well, that was probably my most favorite hike I've ever done. Oh yeah, you? oh yeah, oh yeah. This place is so cool <clears throat> and it has probably a lot to do with it being so empty right now. Yeah, it's dead. But the landscape is so vast and like changing every half mile. It's completely different. It's super cool to do the, the trail around the rim. Yes, yeah. Ended up, we went two and a half miles around the rim, and now we're going back towards the van. So it'll be a five mile in and out around the rim. And we're gonna come back 
in a day or two, maybe tomorrow, and hike inside the canyon. Either hike inside the canyon or see if the scenic drive is open for driving. Yeah, I think I'd rather hike inside the rim. Yeah. But we could probably do both since the scenic drive would only take an hour. Yeah. We're coming back. Yeah. So it's about four o'clock. We're heading out to another BLM docking spot. We don't know where we're gonna go yet, but hopefully there's two or three within I think 20 or 30 minutes of Bryce Canyon here, so we're gonna go spend the night in a new spot. Beautiful spot in the pines. 